Yeah, they're very deeply awake. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about this idea of expansion and contraction. It's an idea that was brought to my attention a long time ago, and I really think it's true. And because I really thought it was true at the time, it just struck me as true. In Kron of Rutable. And then I've had so many uh, teachers say the same thing. And today I've kind of figured out why it's true. So the idea is that once you expand, once you have expanded in your consciousness, what's another way of saying that? Once you've changed, but it's an inside change, <laughs> you wake up or go to bed different than you were, and you know it. Something's happened. Well, that what happened to me. It's been happening. I've, uh, wow, since Thanksgiving. Wow, has it been a rich and lush time. Um, yesterday was on a whole new level. Yesterday was very different. And yesterday I have, uh, uh, I've never experienced such pain. I laid in my bed for about an hour crying because I hurt. I couldn't get past it. <laughs> I have a few uh, tools in my toolkit too. It was just tremendous. That's a conundrum. I don't exactly know what to do with that. But that's, I think, my own little story. And it's a tussle I'm having with my sense of humor. But, um, golly, I'm waking up feeling really good. I mean, before I open my eyes, I'm glad to be here. I feel on purpose. And, <laughs> yeah, I hesitated. <laughs> Happy. Oh, dare I say it? So, it's it's sort of a big deal. And I read yesterday an article from someone who lives in Hawaii, who is a channeler, and what she said rang true. I believe her name is Lisa Brown. I'll be posting it with this. And it was that we just had been inundated. Um, this was read yesterday, and it said that yesterday and the day before. So it gives you an idea. So in the corridor, <laughs> we've been blasted. And I thought, well, that makes sense. Because I'm feeling good. But then last night, in an effort to calm my body, down and um, quiet my soul. Ah, I put on this year's newest cryon recording from Newport, California. Those are always done around Christmas time and they are always uh, game changers. <laughs> this one certainly was. Something that was said just triggered an understanding though this morning. It was about the same thing that they always talk about. If, you know, everybody on Earth seemed to have gotten the same idea at about the same time, and then uh, the Wright brothers beat out the French by a week. Same idea with the radio and other inventions. A big bunch of people get it and uh, independently work on it, and then there's a little bit of a foot race to see who gets to introduce it. And many in the spiritual community feel the same sort of, I do, the same sort of, uh, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep up. I gotta keep up. There are a lot of people doing this. And you may not see them, but I'm in very good company. But I am in company. And I have to keep the pace up. And we get to hit a light, so, oh, okay. But that's, it's not the idea of, of competition, what I'm getting at is that um, 
they explained, and I really like the explanation because this morning it solidified something that's very true for me that I'd like to give to you now. They said, you know, it's not that we we visit people and give inventions to them. It's not like that. We lift the veil. And those who can access the info do. Let that one cook. <laughs> so this morning, <coughs> I'm aware that um, this whole, because I, I, I got it whole this morning. Here it is. Get a big hit of light. It is a game changer. I mean, suddenly, you realize that you've been somehow, somehow, able to see through your eyelids this lifetime. Because uh, suddenly, suddenly, you can see. It's like, oh yeah, there's my eyelids. Oh wow, that's how I was managing? Like that. But this morning I'm thinking, well, you know, here's the deal. Where there's expansion, there's contraction. Because I wondered, how is it that you can get so powerfully lit and then have problems? Well, here is the story. From the human perspective. There is a beauty a symmetry, a release, a welcome home in certain energies, music, poetry, doing what you love to do, that which completely unhooks you from your worries. Is it pottery, writing, sculpture? Being in nature, what is it? But you get a hit of something big. You get a peek at the veil. What is a veil but something that can come down again? And as the veil flutters down over the vision like eyelids, you got to figure it out. Is that light still there? Have your geometries changed? Yep. You bet. Because that becomes an imperative, a true north, like a compass point. That feeling, that understanding, that awareness, that release, that astringent that you got to dip in for whether it was six minutes or six hours or six days. And then you've got to go back into the density that you yourself have created through choices into the circumstances that you have chosen and you get to translate this great gift you were given into physical reality with the idea that your translation will eventually include this new aroma or freedom or whatever it is. It's a beautiful thing, but it also explains how it is that we can have dips how I can, <laughs> if you've been reading me, you know that there's a theme that runs through my writing from 2012 forward. How can I feel so good when I'm meditating or I'm having a moment or I'm whatever and still feel like this now? How is that possible? I really, really think that it's about habits of thought, of self-perception.
believing oneself a certain thing with certain capabilities and abilities and goals and um, certain things that are off limits, you realize you're so much more. And you, you have it on good authority. You have it on the authority of your own body and circumstances that you can't quite explain. But no, you must hold dear because they're beautiful. And then whew, into density. And I really think that what's happening to the crew, to some of us who have been at this daily, hourly, hourly, some of us for decades, with energy that was not commensurate with our magnificence. Suddenly, suddenly, there's a bit of a match. Something within that recognizes this beauty, recognizes God, has had enough practice to be able to sort of hold hold the space, hold the expansion space. At least where we contract to after an expansion is not down to zero, but I'm thinking of an inverted pyramid. We're a little bit further up, so we don't have to go down to the null, z null zone, the, z the void. We can instead just expand. I think it's lovely. It's exciting. It's exciting. So this helps me because, of course, isn't it always, well, how does this translate? I know that I'm, you know, a transfigured goddess when I'm reading Keats or, I don't know, Rumi or whatever. I know of my inner strength and my resilience and my love. And then I am invited to engage socially or professionally with someone so dense that they think it's a good idea to do the things they do. I'm not going to use this time to catalog behavior that is troublesome to a collective or group. I think we all know, don't we? Selfishness, greed, needing to punish, needing to be right at everyone else's expense, being paranoid. Yeah. And of course I can recognize all of those fine traits in me. <laughs> But yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not quite there. And I think during the time when my pattern and my was shifting, and I could see not only myself in that behavior, but then myself as the receiver of that behavior. How do I get out of this? I knew there'd come a time when the pain would be harder and harder to look at, explain, dissect, and heal. And then it would be a matter of walking around and living and being happy. And that time is nearly here. Regardless of circumstance. This last crayon tape was important. They talked about, uh, well, 
They talked about fractal time, talked about physics. and uh, made it entirely plain. Well, they inferred quite a lot, but they made it plain. That things are changing, and it's changing because of the choices we're making as a humanity, as a people. And what that means, the choice you make on a Tuesday afternoon affects more than you know. The choices you make matter. How are you making your choices? Reflexively and from fear or anger? Bitterness? Being convinced that what's come before is exactly what's going to come now? That you don't deserve any better? You've done too much shit to have it good to have any kind of reward. Yeah, I enjoy that. <laughs> really, you have that much power? The dark has that much power over you? You don't know the dark, then. You don't know how fragile it is. You don't know how easily toppled it is. And I do, and it's not easily toppled, but it is toppled. And it certainly is not by grappling with it and saying, Oh, look at you. You are so magnificently huge and so much bigger than me. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? So the bullies of this world, they're more and more insignificant. As is the bullying I've done. It's just a mindset. And thankfully it's passing. But habits, you know, they die hard. And if you're used to doing things a certain way and you're used to being reflexive in your behavior, you really like just not thinking about things. They're not going to change a whole lot, I wouldn't imagine. But I don't know. All I know is for me. All I know is mine. And uh, I don't behave that way. I want things to change. I can see how intolerable some people's behavior is and what kind of an effect it has on me. Just wanting people to act decently and to be a little bit positive. I want to mention those damn signs I see on the highway. I even saw one randomly on a street that I was, of course, parking on to go into a home to do home care. And the sign is blinking. And it's, there's no traffic even. But it's one of those big ones, you know, with the solar panel thingy. And it's blinking. Car theft is a problem. Lock your car. And that's the kind of crap that gets put on the highway. And I'm thinking, you know, they, they have such an opportunity here. Because traffic slows. If there's a if there's a message on that ding dang board as I'm driving to work, well then people are gonna slow down to read it. You know what they slow down to read? Ah, <sighs> the DOT is so nice, aren't they? They need to make sure that all passengers and drivers know there have been 596 deaths in uh, accidents in Colorado this year. So be careful. <sighs> Really? Go fuck yourself. That's what you're going to pollute my consciousness with? You have this opportunity and you're going to crap on me like that? Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> but that sort of was this um, sand in my, in my shoe for the longest time. Just, damn it. Why, why must we just focus on the fear? But now it's more like just it's lightening up. So when I, when I look at an ad, I'll sometimes say to who I'm hanging with, all right, now wait a minute, what are they going to sell us? Are they selling us a lifestyle? Safety? Belonging? Or sex? Go. And then we watch. Oh, okay, this is a safety one. Because he just made it very plain that I'm not safe without the product. 
Or, oh, this is a belonging one because he's learning English in a bathtub. He's going to go give love. All right. So, advertising is such a cancer. And such a wickedly powerful tool. For good. For good. As are those signs. They could be dangling there saying, Turn to the car to your left and smile. That driver is your friend. Or something like that. Would that hurt? Or um, consider a peaceful approach or whatever. One day, one fine day, but for now, we get to learn about traffic fatalities in Colorado. <laughs> whatever. So that's the density. How am I going to handle it? And maybe that's the point. How am I going to handle it? Am I going to look at that lit up sign this morning? And once again, feel a little bit crushed because here's another opportunity for the dark to punch, punch us as we drive by. Be afraid, be very afraid. Or, okay, maybe I just uh, notice that traffic's slowing and flow with it. See the sign and see that there's riding. Look around and listen to music. <laughs> and then, hopefully, one day, I won't even notice it. Incremental change with expansion and contraction at its heart. Expansion and contraction, expansion and contraction. Much like breathing, much like breathing. This light and dark, this dance of expansion and contraction, of light being shed and absorbed. I think it makes uh, the difficulties I may have easier to uh, accept. But I'm missing something and that is the raw power that's available. There's something new. And it's true. What I've said is true. I have had a few instances of instant manifestation. I don't mean quick, I mean in the moment. Knowing I was doing it and then doing it and having it happen right. More than once. So, my team has been saying for months, what do you want? Order it up like a menu. Check all manifest. Check all manifest. Pick out what you want. Order it. It's yours. What do you want? Because sure, sure, I have to dip back into density perhaps because I've just come from a big, 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 big expansion. So there might be a dip, but I'm not really feeling one. Not appreciably. So what do I want? <coughs> if this is sustained, and it is, and it's never. Okay, I want a coach bag and a Ferrari. It's not like that. Although I wouldn't mind either of those. I guess I don't know. I don't want a Ferrari. I want an. I want a Mini Cooper. 
<laughs> but those are things. They're symbols of feeling states. They're symbols of feeling states. So what? what? So, it's very airy-fairy. It's very ethereal, but I say it. And it changes. But I've gotten used to doing something. The last uh, couple months, after I've had a really big day, and I'm feeling better, and I know inside that something is more solid than it was before. When I'm laying down to go to sleep, I think about the people I haven't met yet who are riding around in my fields, including the love of my life. And I say, you can come across a, a step closer now. Can't you tell? I'm more ready for you now. I'm almost there. What I've realized the last few days is that it's got nothing at all to do with the other. It has to do with me. It was me I was coming closer to. And just as a coach bag or a Ferrari or a Mini Cooper are symbols, for me, I think um, relationship has been a symbol of attainment, of finally being acceptable to others. Of having figured things out for myself. And finally not being offensive to others. I think that's sad when I say it out loud. <sighs> but if I told you what a what a coach bag meant symbolically to me, or Mini Cooper, you'd have the bare bones of it. So I'm going to spend some time on what do I want? But I know what I want. It's so simple. It's the same thing I've wanted since I began to wake up. Freedom. Ease. Independence. Self-sufficiency. Self-direction. Answering to no one. Unless I choose. With money removed from every equation. Free. Out of time. Removed. Stepped out. No longer participating. Creating, creating, creating. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sharing. Supporting and being supported. Ha 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 ha. And I realize, you know, this is a dense creation I've made. I'm coming from such density. So. I don't know how far I'm going to get this lifetime. But I know where I'm going. I can't wait for my next lifetime. I may have another 30, 40 years here. I don't know. I don't know. I've been feeling so much the last month or so that I was dying. And I've had evidence that my body's changing really significantly and uh, seems like not for the best. How is that possible? I'm finally feeling better. So, I'm walking to the sink, and to close, I'll tell you this. Walking to the sink this morning, saying, yeah, well, this is another frickin' um, jokes on me kind of thing, huh? Find someone who I actually love, and who loves me, and he's mute and invisible. Joke's on you, Kathy. Doesn't want to be around you, but he sure loves you. Attain. 
spiritual clarity. Find the inner peace you have been searching for daily, your entire life, and watch your body die at the same time. Joke's on you. So many of life setups are like that. For me, at least. <laughs> and so what I've been doing is seeing my life in two separate sections. Because up until I'm saying, uh, pick a day, maybe it'll come to me on the 12-12, but up until a certain day, things were a certain way, and I did not know how to respond any differently energetically. And I was set a certain way. I needed to be isolated, alone. I couldn't have a partner. I know why now. Um, I, I had to be, they, there were certain things that had to be done. And they blew, but I did them faithfully and obediently. And now I feel like I'm on different time. I feel like a different person. And so this is where I'm at is, do I really have to be, be beholden to this old me who r really did get beat up? <laughs> I mean, just really, the things I could tell you. <sighs> but for every, oh my God, really? There would be a miracle that I had been given as well. So. Who am I to complain, right? So um, I kind of feel like, yeah, that's the that's the idea is that there's the time before, and now there's the new time. And if I if my this physical body chooses to die now, well, I'm coming back, but it doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? I still have work that's unedited. I'd kind of like to do that editing. Not really, but I would. I, somebody's got to do it with oversight and precision and responsibility. Seems it should be the writer. I have other things to say. I don't want to expend my body and feel like it's not carrying me the rest of the way. So I'm at the sink, <clears throat> and with this I'll close. The teachers had always said, when you get a hit of light, it's the parts of your body that have been the most injured, and it's the, 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 the earliest injuries, and the most profound ones, that are then reactivated and hurt the most. And now I, th I think I can see why. Because they're the densest. And if once you've expanded and you've gotten more, you're holding more light, then what is unbalanced or what is angular or n asymmetric, it's going to feel more and more and more uncomfortable. So it comes up for healing. I was really raw with you. Hope that's okay. I know how I want to really end. My friend Amy, she's such a sweetheart. And um, she posted something about having cried her eyes out about something. And then, then she did a little video on one of those live things on Facebook after a major crying jag. So her eyes were puffy and she was really raw. And then today, she posted something that said how powerful it was to have revealed and then to have been witnessed in her revealing and then to witness herself being witnessed in her extremity. <laughs> I wanted to write on her feet. Uh, yeah, sounds familiar www.kathypick.com But yeah, I mean, that's it's like, wow! Wow! 
there is a ripple effect. When I share, it's helping. And I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced of it. So there ain't nothing wrong with this. And I'm so glad that, um, that Amy and so many others are finding new and beautiful ways to self-express and to give in their rawness, their honesty, their authenticity. Oh, 35, 35. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. So now today, thankfully, thankfully, is the 12-6. I prefer the upper numbers and I prefer moving past five. Six more days. And I'm not expecting a transfiguring moment, okay? It'd be great if it happened. But I have enough experience to know that um, it's just, uh, it's nice to have something to look forward to. It's nice to have something to um, work toward or to know is coming. That's good. <laughs> I have, I really enjoy having things to look forward to. It's what I think is a cornerstone of mental health. I feel better when I have something to look forward to. <sighs> Don't you? So, um, we have it coming up. In the meantime, treat yourself well. Ride those hits of light. And don't despair when you go into the doldrums. You're supposed to. It's a recalibration. I hope that this explanation helped you understand that better. Thank you for coming along for the ride.